Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex. Today we're going to be taking a look at Lunastis on the Nintendo Switch. A budget indie release and a retro styled 3D platformer, but is it worth the minimal cost to run through this world? Well that's what I'm here to find out, so hit subscribe, join us here for reviews and deals daily, and let's get started. <laughs> If you are thinking about grabbing this one then or anything else for that matter from the eShop consider using cornershop.gg for discounted email eShop credits. You'll get 10% off at checkout using code CORNER. Story then and I have absolutely no idea what is going on here and I watched the intro cinematic a good 4 or 5 times to get a grasp of it. It opens though with a voiceover of a scientist suggesting someone is missing a doctor and she is required to solve whatever the mystery is at hand. That said though it seems our lead Hannah has control over this world and yeah basically it appears to be some sort of program so we are now heading into this loop. The outro sequence and once you beat the game it adds very little else honestly other than almost returning to the beginning of the loop and the game then it unlocks some further characters to experiment with. It feels like they were ambitious with this story and it resulted in something so minimal that it doesn't really tie it all together. Thankfully though, that all said, it is a platformer at the end of the day and the gameplay fares a whole lot better. Gameplay then, and we have a 3D platformer that actually gives me an air of Sega Saturn styled gameplay. It feels like it's it's predating the PlayStation 1 in its influences. The controls though, they are simple. We can jump, double jump, we can spin attack. We can essentially then as well combine the two to create what would be a triple jump. We can also then interact with environmental objects such as springboards, grind rails and general pieces that often project you across the world. If there was an influence here for me it feels very sonic, think that almost cinematic style of out of control platforming like running through a loop but then it's combined with something precision based platforming. All honestly though it really comes together nicely. We also then will unlock two further characters to play as Tori, who I believe is relatively popular in the retro styled 3D platformer world and then Tuki as well. Each of these they vary in the controls, Tori for example is extremely fast but lacks an attack while Tuki lacks such a good jump but now increases the speed of the attack and also allows up to a triple jump. It's definitely a nice add to see these extra characters for replayability. The levels then will actually be facing off against the seven zones. The first six they contain are two levels each. The seventh it actually has three but the third it requires you to complete specific objectives to give it a go. All in though it was 15 levels and my first run it took me just a shy of two hours after countless deaths. When a game gives me an incredibly fast character honestly I can't help but maximise that and no doubt it did, well it definitely did actually in fact it led to my demise on more than a few occasions. While the controls then are simple as well that's exactly what you want because the game it's going to dial up the challenge extremely quickly with the platforming it's just becoming more and more precise and the ground below you it quickly disappears leading to a near slew of bottomless pits out to end you and throw you basically back to the last checkpoints. Thankfully though these checkpoints for the most part are frequent outside of I'd say a few occasions. While there is enemies as well in this world it's extremely easy to dispatch of them and you'll only see a few varieties on this journey. Basically you've got some that stay in place blocking that next route, others they do attack but it's nothing more than an AI where they immediately zero in on your location. A curious problem with this one though for me it's the speed that it introduces the mechanics, the controls, the jumps and the attacks. It actually took 6 out of 7 zones to introduce me to the fact that I could use the attack as a way to do a triple jump. Why not tell me that from the very beginning, given the attack in fact that was not introduced till the midway point of the game after I'd ran past multiple enemies. I really don't understand why the game was so secretive about the skills available. 
the game then it packs a few nice options as well outside of the presets we can use some alternate controls we can turn off auto run and we can change the invert and the speed of the camera also as well for replayability alongside those extra characters the game packs a whole host of collectibles and these are going to be in the form of cranes just frequently levels contained over 100 to find and one it packed over 500 to be honest the latter one there that was by far the weakest level i faced mainly because while nearly all of them are linear with the occasional collectible branching pathway this one it just gave no direction or clue of where you needed to go and it just felt a little slow in comparison to the rest of the package that said though lucky was one of the weaker levels in what was for me 15 strong designs even the ladder game where it dials up the difficulty yes it can be brutal but it always felt like a nice extension of the last level we faced and yet, yeah, even the fact that some of the grind rails I did find the auto connection could be a little unpredictable at times, I still had an absolute blast. For me though, honestly, like retro fans, overall a 15 levels, a couple of hours of gameplay, and yet yeah, even now that I've beat that first run, I still have a huge amount of reasons to go back in. I can try the two new characters, I can beat my best time, I can find all of the collectibles, and finally, I can aim for an S ranking because I was rarely close here and each level it actually breaks down at the end of your run exactly how you did which actually even immediately led to me replaying a couple of the locations just to see if I could simply one up myself. Graphically then I really like it that old school 3D platformer 5 it works for me and I'll lead Tanuki basic animations but still absolutely looks the part the levels as well they go all over the place from space to a candy like world to even a more traditional jungle given the speed of the game as well there's no popping at all here which is exactly what you want to see in the options then as well a few nice alternatives we can change the ui size we can turn on depth of field we can add a character shadow and finally we can also add a crt filter with how creative the locations are though my one complaint i really do wish they'd gone a bit more all out on the enemy design because all in off the top of my head i can name maybe four or five total enemy designs and even then a couple of those were spins on an idea i'd already seen audio finally and the sound effects are minimal we do open with a voiceover which feels completely out of place with the visual design but that almost seems to be on purpose given the missing Dr. Five and almost this, you know, digital world. I suspect this, it's trying to aim for kind of this alternate reality of sorts. Then the music, really good stuff, suitably chip tune, fast paced as well, and the tunes, you'll instantly be humming them after you've heard them, even when you do put the game down. I did, however, though I will warn here, have one audio issue, and that was a level entirely without music. It disappeared, but it did return a level later. So the final verdict, and honestly, it's not perfect. The story made absolutely no sense, and a few of the mechanics, they can feel a tiny bit finicky, like the rail sections that you do grind, or at least that is the case for the latter half of the game. Also, the audio, as I said, it did disappear on me momentarily towards kind of the midway point of the experience. These issues, though, they feel a minor when you do factor in the price here. It's $5 or your regional equivalent and it's a game where the passion from the developer it is absolutely clear for me today then i ended up having an absolute blast i spent two hours on the story that first run now i have plenty of reasons to head back in from the new playable characters to the collectibles to the fact i'm nowhere near an s ranking on pretty much 90 percent of the levels Today then a great 8 out of 10 from me and a strong suggestion for genre fans to absolutely pick it up. Now though I do hope this leads to further entries because the ability is absolutely clear here and I'd love to see them take some bigger risks, expand it out, build upon that narrative and give us you know, something that's a little bit more meaty in that length of the experience. Will you be picking it up though? Let us know in the comments down below. With that then, like, hit subscribe, join us here for reviews and deals daily, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.